die quasi dritte Kaya Wish. Ich möchte zur Bewege für etwas zu suchen. Ähm, das ist Ball offiziell. Und zwar sind wir am Gangen, Tabstadt darauf zu präparieren, dass sie sich vielleicht wählt, ein bisschen mehr zu bannen, befanden. Ähm, wie ich gestern erzählt habe, hat äh, der Gouverneur gesagt, dass er vielleicht die Weekend will, die Bande bleiben Und das klappt erstaunlich gut. Und das ist etwas, was für alle mit der japanischen Kultur das gut funktioniert, das Vollischen. Wenn man die Hierarchie da sieht, dass die Vollische soll, da geht da doch das gemacht. Und das ist also so ein Moment, wo halt die Begesucht geht, hey, das ist eine Zeit, für die Bande zu bleiben. Ich habe das zwar nicht gemacht, weil mich interessiert, heute für einfach rauszugehen und zu gucken, wie das da los ist. Und ähm, es hat wirklich gemerkt, dass das Weekend lo mehr Leute die Bande bleiben sind. Das interessant bei der Sache ist natürlich, dass die Leute äh, gestern oder vier gestern angefangen haben, äh, Hamsterkäfe zu machen. Ich weiß nicht genau, ich muss da effektiv nur gucken, wie ein Hamsterkäfe auf Japanisch heißt. Ob das nämlich der schon ist, äh, was dann da lo, äh, Hamster geht. Aber ja, die Leute sind auch Käfe gegangen. Ähm, das, was ich gesehen habe, wirklich, dass mein Leben sich normalerweise an den, äh, an den Superetten, äh, an den Kombinien, wo man drum dreift. Äh, wenn ich mal da ein bisschen umgeguckt habe, was da lebt, dann witzigerweise eh von den wirklich großen Mini-Supermaschinen, hey, die nicht nur für 3D ist, 30 Prozent auf allem gehen. Aber just ein, die, ein den, den Hermann Gagen das, ein, 30 Prozent auf alles. Ähm, Interessante Anekdote. Äh, Remisen am Japanischen, wenn man den Kanji guckt, da das dann nämlich wie Zeien. Das ist die Kanji für dir machen, das heißt, wenn du dir machst, dann musst du Zeien. Und äh, die Kanji für du hast nur 30 Prozent, da das dann nämlich dann. Das heißt, Zeien, Zeien, roh ro holen, holen, äh, als, als das, was sie, was sie sagen, wenn man da will. So. Und, und natürlich an dem, an dem enge Kombini waren, äh, waren die meisten Regale eitel. Ähm, für den allem Wein, kein Wein mehr da, okay. Äh, an äh, allmählich äh, äh, Cupnudels, äh, also Zopf an der Bix, mehr an einer Plastiksbix, wo ein äh, warmes Wasser muss drauf geheilen. Das war relativ ausverkauft. Ähm, und noch, und noch so äh, Spirituosen äh, waren nicht mehr da. Was ja auch normal ist, wenn wir denken, wenn die Welt zum Ende kommen, dann ist es wahrscheinlich, dass die Leute sich werden, äh, an irgendeinem Moos, an einer Stimmung versetzen werden. Ähm, da tun Zeitungen auch natürlich gemerkt. Und äh, das ist. Ja, keine Ahnung, das ist so. Das ist ein bisschen so wie, wie, wie das Wort schreibt, dass den. Äh, den äh, was war das denn? Ähm, der Fangeraufdruck von einem Killer oder irgend so einem reißerischen äh, Coronavirus-Abhänger, den dann äh, die Parallelen möchte zwischen einem Massenmörder an, an diesem Virus. Äh, ich kann die Journalistin geschrieben hat, ja, der Titel ist gut, von denen sie nächst, nächst Netflix-Karriere will abbauen. Nee. Für den Rest, ach, das ist ein guter Journalist, das ist auch noch ein Problem dabei. Das ist einfach, weil ein bisschen mehr skeptisch möchte. Ähm, nee, das, dann habe ich auch äh, Shoppers Scurry to Supermarkets. Das ist so, ja, mehr nee. Aufgesehen davon, ne? Was man definitiv hätte gesehen, 
nur no, das im Weekend, wo man gesagt hat, wir sollen da bleiben, wo dann alle Menschen rausgegangen sind, für irgendetwas zu kaufen, sich wahrscheinlich infiziert hat und das Problem nur mehr schlimm wird gemacht haben. Und das andere, wie wir das mal Jahre aufhängen, rauszufinden, dass es keine Infektionen gibt, aber wie weit fanden wir das raus? War einfach. War weil man mehr testen. Es gibt mehr getestet, aber mehr getestet geht, dann ist es relativ logisch, dass mehr Leute positiv sind. Weil ich meine, das ist, äh, das ist, das ist kein, ähm, kein Hexerei. Ähm. Anyway. Hm. The, the fundamental interesting thing is for me personally that you really see parallels between certain systems of power that are independent of of uh, culture geographic location or, or whatever um the the fact that that Abe was kind of lowballing it in in not responding properly to to the COVID crisis has purely to do with a his cling to power. He wants to be reelected. That's a fact. And that is not because he's in Japan and because he's an elected official, but that is because it's like that all over the world in Luxembourg as well. The, all, all people in power want to be reelected and If you get them in a vulnerable moment and you ask them, they will tell you exactly that. And that's, that's kind of legitimate. <laughs> It's like, that's normal. If you taste power, you want more power. That's legit. Um, the more interesting question is the entitlement that this power gives you. Like, if you want to get elected again because of the entitlement and not because of your mandate to to help well not, not necessarily to help but to kind of serve the people who elected you that's a whole different a whole different story um and and mostly like like abe was in a in a, in a tricky situation where on one hand he had to handle the olympic fiasco which is like this is a fucking disaster you've got Half half of your country's consumer companies that have marketed Tokyo 2020 up to the point where you walk into any random shop and you hear all the jingles about, oh yeah, it's Tokyo 2020, be fucking happy and just buy our stuff. And then now all of a sudden the government has to say, yeah, guys, it's postponed. Nah, business people will not be happy. But in the current climate? Hmm? maybe also business people can get COVID and kind of, yeah, not be well, to say the least. Um, of course, some fantasists want to believe in a spring version of, uh, of the Olympics, but that's not going to happen. That's like, if you take a look at What is really happening in other countries? Nah, not going to happen. Because bear in mind, the only reason why the Olympics got postponed now is because the athletes stepped up, said, okay, this is unfair. We cannot train. We cannot get valuable points because not all athletes actually were qualified for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. So they couldn't go to their events where they could get qualifying points. And they said, okay, get the fuck out of here. Come on, this is just unfair. And the Olympic Committee listened, uh, luckily, and I really doubt that the Olympic Committee has any real touch anymore with the, the Olympic spirit. It's a multi-million dollar machine that, that kind of has various random contracts with Coca-Cola and any other big company. So, ha. Huh. I'm not sure that sports is their main motive, even though they they spin that in the press, that that is their, their, their first thing. But come on, it is not. And 
take a look at what happened in the past. All the bloody scandals, all the the random teams that were tested positive for random performance enhancing drugs. And then the Olympic Committee is, is giving a half assed fucking excuse. Nah, get out of here. Um Anyway, but that that's no no news in, 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 in the classical sense. That's just known. It's on fucking record. Um, economically speaking, in, in Japan, it's going to be tough because uh, last year there was a, a, a tax hike. That's how the press kind of portrays it. Um, it, it was a 2% tax hike. In Europe, if you tell people we raise the tax 2%, they're going to fucking laugh at you. Uh, here it was a big deal. Um, eh, justified or not, not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm a guest here. I just barely have a mini grasp on what really goes on. Um, I would argue that financially speaking, it, it wasn't that big of a hike. Um, mentally and, and morally, it was like, oh my god, they're gonna, they're gonna really tax me hard, but it wasn't that bad. Plus, they it, they, they made a difference between like take away and eat in and and so on and so forth. So yes, it was two percent. the the main The main weirdness was that they really wanted to push through the tax hike because they promised it. It's like okay, the government promised the tax hike and it was kind of in their agenda, and now they have to do it. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't really help uh, the current situation. Um, the, the interesting question would be: Okay, if you're gonna just say, okay, let's revert to whatever it was six months ago, would that help people? Not sure. Um, the other thing they are now pushing through, very similar to the US, uh, they want to uh, instantiate a. Um, approximately like uh, two hundred thousand yen one-off payment uh, for the households um, but it's, it's like the details are murky I'm, I'm not really sure about the details and, and the, the the local press they they try to explain it but it's a lot of repetition on 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 what's really happening eh, not sure um the other thing the fiscal year is going to happen in april so first of april the fiscal year in japan kind of starts and that's um very soon tn so I would expect that before the 1st of April, which is in a hmm, couple of days, then there will be a, a kind of a news thing. And the other magical thing I haven't really grasped fully yet, on the weekends, stuff happens. So kind of the government gives news on the weekend. This is by feel. I'm, I'm not sure if that is true, but it, it kind of like feels like that. Every time, like on Monday, it's like, oh yeah, have you heard this happened over the weekend? It's like, okay, well, my government usually does that during the week in normal times. Um, tourism's gonna obviously have a huge uh, hit when all the cancellations come in, and they probably already came in, in by now for the uh, for the the Olympic Games, um, and but that's just that's a, a post facto thing. You you don't really know what the the real impact is uh, until a, a couple of months after, uh, but there 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 will be an impact, uh, of course. Also, they they were expecting forty million people uh, this year. That's not going to happen. Um, and they are quite reliable on the uh, on the tourism sector, and you, you can't really compare that to Luxembourg. Um, and I, I don't want to talk the Luxembourgish tourism sector down because it's 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 important ish, but in terms of volume, it's just like yeah, that's a, a different, a, just a different scale altogether. Um, if you think about democracy, the, the most complicated thing will be in whichever country. It doesn't really matter where in the world it happens. But all the temporary regulations we will put in place now, they have to be rolled back. Will we really roll them back? 
hopefully, hopefully they will be legally safe and sound in the in the sense that the that the texts that are written, the, the, the laws that are put in place, that they have legitimate legal basis to be rolled back after the crisis is over. And I think there is the main problem. When, who, and how do you decide that the crisis is over? Because I'm, I'm not, I, I don't want to compare the current pandemic to the flu, but it's like, if we think about it, okay, let's imagine the flu is the new pandemic. When is the flu crisis over? Because it's so fucking generic. Like I get the flu once a year. If, of course, if you are, have a vaccine, you're probably okay, but people get the flu once a year. So all of a sudden you could argue that, okay, the pandemic will never be over because this is kind of a big thing and we need to be careful. And of course now these temporary measures all of a sudden become a permanent measure. I think in, in terms of democracy, this is something to be very, very careful about and a thing to keep an eye on. And where we as citizens and we as people who elect our officials need to really um, keep an eye on them. Um, and, and not because they are necessarily uh, m like malevolent, but just because it's it's comfortable because some of the rules they had they just make ruling as such easier it's just like easier and that kind of slowly but surely can grind into an authentic regime but we're, we're far from that but that that's that's a, a legitimate concern i would um i would argue um not gonna talk about masks because masks are, are like they're bloody stupid. It's, I don't know. Masks are like, if you don't know how to scuba dive and you put on a scuba diving mask, you will probably suffocate. And this is fairly similar. And I, I, I took a closer look at people who wear masks here. Sometimes it's under the nose. Sometimes it's, it's bloody over the, over the, the glasses. And then very few people have the, the real protective masks and they are just bloody trust the scientists. If a scientist tells you masks protect other people if you are sick, like, okay, that's the general um, uh, masks that you get for like clinical, clinical use, they're probably fucking right because they read the books for you. Um, and then anything else, the other masks, they are fully sealed around your mouth. You probably will have a little bit of trouble to breathe through it because it's a real filter. That probably works a little bit to to kind of um, not be randomly infected by some viral stuff flying around. Um, then again, before you just put on a mask like half-assed and without purpose, I would suppose leaving the mask to people who need it is is a better idea. Oh, the other thing coming back to the um <laughs> to the uh, olympic spirit the uh, the governor of tokyo showed interest that um in case the olympics are postponed maybe the marathon can travel now back to tokyo because that was a micro scandal here a couple of months ago the ioc the international olympic committee they moved the marathon up to the north to uh, hokkaido um, out of concerns of the health of the um, athletes because it's really hot. It's like 40 degrees centigrade plus and 80% um, humidity in the, in the midsummer here. So they, they moved it to Hokkaido because the weather is just plainly better and like better for marathon for sure. But the IOC didn't really ask the Tokyo uh, officials like the Tokyo governor and, and their office, and they were already planning everything. So they, they were really pissed off by this uh, by this random decision to just move it up to, to Hokkaido because, um, well, it's twofold. Of course, it costs money to uh, arrange a uh, marathon of that, um, of that stature. It's, it's like bloody big and you need to close streets and so on and so forth. Um, and mostly the, the other thing is... Um, uh, 
historically the hosting country always has the marathon as 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 the central event in the capital so if tokyo doesn't host the marathon yeah it's kind of like history not being done justice um, bear in mind just google the history of the olympics and um, you will quickly find out that the the marathon was kind of the event um, at least initially um, also marathon is a city in uh, uh, somewhere around greece um, so yeah that, that's fun so now she wants it back after kind of being pissed off so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that how that plays uh plays out um yeah that's nearly it but i don't know it's a magical moment where you you see especially america waking up to <laughs> like oh a social safety net hmm that would be really good right now and yeah no shit dude that's a good idea and the, the the fact that they are still bickering now in 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 the house and in the senate but mostly in the house at the moment uh about like how much is it like i don't know like 600 bucks per um like one-off payment 600 bucks and the main concern is people on minimum wage will now get more money due to the stimulus package than before and now they might become fucking lazy. It's like, seriously? Get the fuck out of here. That they have other bloody issues than becoming lazy in, 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 in times of like, ah, uh, this is bad. And I I don't want to make it worse for anyone. That's just like rich old people who have lost touch to a certain extent. Um, yeah. I should really rename this like middle-aged dude screaming at the internet because that's in the end uh, what the internet has partially come down to it's like yeah middle-aged people usually white usually male screaming at some random ass camera and and being like upset with the the state of things um not ideal to say the least in more Japanese news, and th th that's like, ugh. If you're not in love with Japan, don't come to Japan. You need to be in love with Japan because, or just like put your head in the sand, don't read the news. So th th this is a, a kind of a, a micro headline in, uh, in, in Japan times, I think. It's like, JAL lets female crew ditch heels wear pants. Uh, JAL being uh, Japan Airlines. So Japan Airlines now graciously lets uh, female crew members not wear heels. And also they are now allowed to wear pants. Oh, great. Oof. Bloody equality, eh? This is like, yeah, come on. And the only reason, well, no, I don't want to say the only reason, but one of the reasons that, that actually uh, came to that is uh, a couple of months ago again, there was the um, the kutsu movement, uh, kutsu being shoes, and um, they abbreviated it to uh, hashtag uh, ku, like ku, and then tu, like me too, but ku too, like uh, my shoes too. Um, and they complained about the fact that that it's semi accepted, semi legal that the uh, company you work for as a woman can oblige you to decide what you wear as in like oh yeah you have to wear heels because that is how a woman has to look like you have to um to ditch your your glasses because a woman is not allowed to wear glasses because that's not really womanly if you know what i mean and and that was kind of legit for for bloody ever here um and and now all of a sudden ah uh, yeah maybe not and then in, 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 at the end of the article, you've got a quote from, uh, from the prime minister uh, saying that um, women should not suffer from dress code requirements, according to local media, although a minister previously said they were necessary and appropriate. They didn't say which minister it was, 
but it was basically the same minister who was really, really sad that the Olympic uh, athlete who uh, was struck by cancer couldn't compete. It's, I don't know, it, it's like, I don't know, an 80-year-old old dude who lost touch of everything, I suppose, um, who, who, like, is just not in his bloody place. It's like, dude, you can be inconsiderate, but then just not be in an official position. Again, I mentioned the book. Read the bloody book. It really explains you why this inconsiderate person is in in the position he is in because he fell up the ladder due to, you know, like um, good life choices. If you choose the right university and you have the right friends, all of a sudden you are a minister who can say shit like that. Um, yeah, yeah, obviously that's kind of bad, but again, I'm just European, so maybe in, uh, in this neck of the woods that might be normal, but I, I think it's not normal. There's, there's a lot of people who kind of stood up, up for that, and if you talk uh, with, with, with local people here and you kind of confront them with, with these news, because maybe they haven't read it or they're not aware of it, they, they're like, oh, really, is this happening? Well, that's wrong. It's like, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of wrong. Or at least it's debatable and you can have a, have a, have a talk about it. Um, yeah, anyway, but by now everyone is doing the home office anyway, so um, uh, that's going to turn out just fine. Um, hmm. Kind of weird. Also, the, the, the picture I, I, I put up uh, is, is a... A queue for a local far kind of a pharmacy. Um, it's like uh, CVS in the U.S. You get all kinds of crap over there, from from your your, your pharmacy goods. Um, sometimes even RX, like the stuff, uh, the over-the-counter stuff where you need the doctor's prescription. Um, and and this was taken when the um, toilet paper mask fiasco started a couple of months a month ago or so but it starts again now because obviously uh, people are panicking again so i suppose they are now stocking up on uh, toilet paper <laughs> maybe now japan is uh, going into the, the 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 human necessity of hoarding toilet paper as opposed to the rational one where you think a company cannot provide toilet paper not sure um, plus my Japanese is not good enough to talk about t toilet paper as such. I should really brush up on my toilet paper talk. Uh, but like in most European and American uh, states, uh, you have this social distance. And yeah, this, this view is, I see that every day. There is no social distance. It's also really difficult. It, it's a city of 30 million and you want to leave a social distance of of, of three meters or, or, or whatever the the metric is nah, it's not gonna fucking work too many people it doesn't scale um, but again I I stick to it because of the measures that are now being suggested because again it's only a suggestion you should stay at home as a suggestion also as far as I understood the uh, the local news there will probably not be a lockdown as such because that's not how this country works you cannot force people to stay at home uh, the legisl the legislature hasn't got that power so you cannot make a law to tell people to stay home so abe it does just doesn't have that power so it's sort of the honor code the honor system that kicks in which which is a um, I don't want to say an archaic uh, way of life here in Japan, but it's, it's sort of like the your word counts. Um, most older people will stick by the honor code. Younger people, not so sure. Like over here, if you sell a car by the shake of by a handshake, that's legal. It's legally binding because it's your word you give. It, it's kind of it's like that's the honor the word the spoken word is a legally binding contract 
um, but I'm, I'm I really wonder if that works up to the to, to the new generation um, and I really doubt that the, the the young generation kind of has put that much thought into into that um, that cultural habit to be honest and the only the only reason I say that is because I I didn't do that when I was young like when I was whatever like uh, anything between 15 and, and 25 pff, yeah whatever my elders did or whatever the custom was that was kind of always there but you never consciously uh, kind of uh, yeah heeded it like took care of it um but eventually now is also a good time where people come together and talk about that we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll, we'll see what happens anyway um way too much ram rambling again but that's okay it's the internet it's apparently free and overloaded um that's another magical thing uh because <laughs> youtube netflix yeah, it's YouTube. YouTube and Netflix actually um, lowered the bandwidth for certain amounts of uh, of data, so you can't 4K stream whatever crap you want to watch, or you can't YouTube at a high bandwidth because the bandwidth is is kind of limited, and now the bandwidth is more used. That's interesting. The scary part is that because of the COVID outbreak, now all the content moderators they are being replaced with artificial intelligence machines. So the machines now do more content moderation. Um, as a matter of fact, I got moderated on one video, but I think, no, I know that it was probably because of a copyright infringement because I was streaming music that was probably um, copyright owned. I don't know yet. I appealed to the decision so I'll, I'll see what it's uh, what it does and if a human gets back to me or if a, a robot gets back to me and um, yeah mostly it's well f yeah the stream I, I, I live stream is, is is a technical live stream so there is no there's no worries there but if you've got idiots who spread fake news that's a different story or if you have people who spread legitimate news like for example uh, this is the right way to wear masks and if then the AI robot kind of thinks that this is fake news because it has a false positive eh, that's that that's bad so th this this blend of technology and, and and everything that's hmm we'll see we'll see what comes out at the other end of of, the, of that one anyway uh, tired bored and not sick yet so take good care stay safe